Hello everyone, Papa Gleb here. If you guys seen my uh, DIY tools and ideas, as I said, I was gonna make a separate video for this. This is take three, to be honest. Um, the other takes were just too long, and I guess I was too tired while making them. But anyways, this is a impressioning key handle. All right, uh, very simple. This thing started its life as a screwdriver. All right, so. While making this, uh, originally I was intending to make this as an IC core tailpiece turner, which in fact it still does that, but then again I made it into a multi-tool. All right, as like I said, this will hold a blank as a pressuring. All right, now this thing is free to make if you have all the tools and these screws, if not the screws are under a dollar. All right, so this tool right here is free or let's, let's call it a dollar, all right? Very simple. I cut this off with a hacksaw, all right? Then I took the biggest key I had, marked approximately where I needed, how far down I needed to cut, placed it, marked it. Now, when you're gonna cut this, you don't wanna go start to finish, all right? First, what you wanna do is take a black marker and just mark down as far as you wanna go. Try to keep it straight as possible. And take your hacksaw blade and Start and every five ten strokes you want to stop and make sure you're going straight You don't want to veer off to the side because then you're just gonna ruin it And if it's a little off to the side, it's gonna be impossible. Well, it's gonna be very hard to straighten up All right, so you want to kind of take 10 20 strokes stop take a look make sure you're straight All right once that's done the hacksaw blade leaves <coughs> Excuse me the hacksaw blade leaves a very um, Thin cut all right, so you're not able to get a file in there. Well, I couldn't get any of my needle files in there. I used the Dremel with a cutting wheel just to make this bigger. All right, if you don't have a Dremel, you're more than welcome to use uh, sandpaper. You could understand, of course, it's going to be much longer and harder and more tedious work, but it's possible. All right, so I took the Dremel cutting wheel and just started slowly, slowly going down, going down, making this into a bigger opening. All right, once that was satisfied, once the blank was easily going in and out, I took this and just took a file to it to straighten it out. All right, this part is round. It would have been kind of hard to work with, so I just flattened it out. Center punched two holes, all right, and got set screws. Oh, sorry, I don't know if that's focused or not, but got two set screws, drilled the holes, tapped the holes, put the set screws, and it's done. All right, I'm going to put in the description exactly what set screws and what tap I used. As you can see in there, oh, I hope you can see it, let me. I can... By the way guys, as I've said before in the videos, to me, this stand is extremely wobbly, but nobody's mentioned it on it. And when I've seen the videos, I didn't see it myself. So if there is wobble, please let me know so I know I'm not going crazy. And if there's not, then I guess the stable stabilization on this camera is not bad. But as you can see, I when I was drilling, I drilled in further than technically you would think you need to. And I'll explain why that is. The tap, um, when you're going to be using the tap, all right, the tap doesn't start making thread from the tip. It starts to make thread somewhere here, about four or five, I guess, threads in. It starts to actually cut the metal. So if I would have stopped here, the thread, the tap wouldn't have been able to go all the way. That's why I made the space so it could go just a little bit further up to here. And I was able to thread both those holes. Alright, now, this thing surprisingly does hold the blank very well. I'm not going to do it on this blank because I still need it. Um, but it does hold the blank very well. Now, I'll show you an issue. When picking what you want to use as your handle you can see here all right uh, let me use my hand you can see that it's kind of already starting to come out and that's that's true every two impressions you know every every two locks I impression i have to take a vice grip and squeeze this back in that's fine that's not a problem all right now like i said this thing was a dollar uh, for me it was a dollar all right Using vice grips, I've tried, it's uncomfortable. With impressioning, it's the type of thing that I learned. You gotta line yourself up for success if you wanna be successful. 
you know, using huge vice grips, you're gonna be breaking blanks. It's just, you know, it's gonna be very difficult. All right, and brushing is the type of thing. Like I said, I'm nowhere, anywhere, I'm probably the furthest person away from telling anybody anything about impersonating is I'm only about six logs down, but I've had six successful openings. All right, so I mean, yes, it took some time, but I'm yeah, oh, sorry, rambling on there. The point is you want to use vice grips, go ahead, but for a dollar, this is worth a try. Believe me, there's a huge difference from using vice grips. I'm not talking about the huge ones because that's, don't even think about those. The little vice grips against those here, I'll even show you which little vice grips I'm talking about. Right, here you go, to comparison, all right? Using these vice grips and this, there is a huge difference. Overall, just in the feel, you know, with every movement like that, every time you're getting marks. I mean, I've tried this, didn't like it. This for a dollar, believe me, half an hour's work was well worth it. Um, all right, I don't think there's anything much more to say on this. I don't want to make this a 10 minute video. If I do remember something else, I will post it in the description. Any questions, comments, please feel free to ask. Um, all right, take care. Hope everyone's having a great uh, holiday season. Stay safe. Bye-bye.